Hey guys, this is Peter with Warm Water Addicts. I'm going to be tying a super easy pike and musky fly. Um, it'll take less than 10 minutes. Let's get started. So, my hook of choice for this is a mustad, big game. Uh, 2 aught. You can do them probably on one aughts too. Uh, this is actually a 3 aught. sorry. I meant the other way around. I'm choosing a 3 aught. You can do a 2 aught probably. Uh, I guess hopefully you can see that. It's a kind of a cool pattern. It's really easy. Nothing difficult about this. You do different color variations and all kinds of cool stuff. You know, it's a cool one. It takes a really, really short amount of time. Let's get started. So you're just going to wrap the... Um, thread right at the tip of that hook. Be careful not to uh, cut your thread because that is extremely frustrating. Gonna add in some flashaboo. Um, I believe that nothing in nature is perfect. Nothing has absolute symmetry. You're never gonna find two trout exactly the same. You're never, you're never gonna find two minnows exactly the same. You're gonna, never gonna find two pike or musky exactly the same. So what does that mean? It means your fly should be just a little different every time. Be it the flashaboo amount, be it um, different angles. Every time one of these stops, that's where a sparkle will uh, start too. So I'll trim this just a little bit. Notice how I'm tapering it. So when it when it's done. The ends are all different sizes. I know you can't probably see that. But the ends are all different lengths. So that means they're going to be different wavelengths and different color and, and, and stuff. Um, I think this definitely helps, uh, in my opinion. Next is going to be your haddle, your haddle, your saddle hackle or schlappen. Um, I'm just using some, some uh, brown saddle hackle. Now, you're going to see me tie this in probably different than you would expect. You'd think that the curve would paint, uh, point towards each other. And a lot of times, I make it like that. I make it like uh, like they're... they're um, I'll, I'll illustrate it. You know, my, my hand's the feather. The curve is going this way. You know, usually make them point each other, right? I'm going to make it... I'm going to make it... Hold on. I'm gonna make it so. <laughs> I'm gonna make it like that. Um, some people think some people don't like this way. Some people think it doesn't work. Uh, I have never had any problems with it. I've brought musky to the boat with both methods. I brought him where the the uh, the feather is pointing inwards, and I brought him up to the boat when it's pointing outwards. Doesn't make a difference. In my opinion, there's going to be some people that tell you differently, and that's okay. Hence, opinions. So you just tie those in. Again, if you look at them, they're, they're splaying different ways instead of pointing towards each other. Uh, I don't, it doesn't really matter. It covers more water, makes it more, has a larger profile. In reality, it probably, they look at it from the side mostly anyway. They being the musky and pike. Next, you're going to put in two um, clumps of bucktail. You're going to first reverse tie them in. You're going to reverse tie both of them in and then fold them over. You know. So the first clump I like to be a little bit smaller than the second. So a little bit larger, about sharpie. Uh, you, we usually use an uh, analogy of a pencil. It being pencil thin, you know, really small or it being a little larger. Uh, this is like a Sharpie, so. Sharpie uh, width, or thickness, I guess you could call it. Again, you're gonna tie it in reverse, clamp down on it, spread it a little bit, mess with it, fluff it up, whatever you gotta do to get it to spread. Pull it back. And then I like to tie it down like this like it to have a slight angle. Oops. You gotta love it when your thread breaks. On camera. Oh boy. It's always a blast. 
But we are human, and that's how that works. So in the comments below, uh, show me pictures of musky flies that you like tying. Any big musky you've caught or pike you've caught recently. Maybe I'll make a collage up of uh, our, our, our work, and I'll send that out. So back to retying this. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've tied that in pretty pretty well. Um, it's going to look a little bulky, and that's okay because once it gets in the water, it's going to put out an even bigger profile, and hopefully a bigger pike or muskie will come up. For the second chunk, I like it even thicker. So probably about a sharpie and a half. Or so. Yeah, doesn't really matter, honestly. This is going to be a little thinner than I than I anticipated. I keep looking down. Sorry, I'm trying to find the the butt ends and stuff. So I like to put this, wrap the thread all the way up to the eye of the hook, and tie it in. Let it spin. Let it do its thing. All right. Pull it back. Right there. And you're just going to wrap ahead whatever design you like. When it comes to pike or musky, they don't really care what the head looks like. So, you know, uh, whatever you like. You whip finish. I like to do at least 20 with my pike and musky flies. Especially if I've already had a couple bites on them, I don't like them coming apart. Always throw some lacquer or head cement on it. Uh, whatever you get to work. And there's the fly, guys. Nothing hard. Notice how notice how sparse this bucktail is. When you're throwing big patterns like these, you don't want them really thick. Uh, mainly because once they get waterlogged, they get heavy. You know, throwing a ten weight it all day is hard enough, and then you add in big, big bugs like this, and you're uh, you might be up the creek without a paddle halfway through the day. Um, so keep it really sparse. Uh, you know, it's not thick. You can kind of see through it, um, but once it gets in the water, it gets pretty translucent or not translucent. Puts off a really nice profile. The feathers look good. This is just a general bait fish. In the in the water, it'll kind of look like this. On the pool, on the pool, the the hackle will do this, and on the paws, the hackle will do that, creating even a bigger profile. So, easy pike fly and musky fly. Uh, I got different variations. This is a brown and olive. This is that pink, that famous pink chartreuse that threw some grizzly hackle in there with some pearl flashaboo. Same deal. Uh, here's a pink and black one I tied. That one's kind of cool. Chartreuse and Grizzly, that always works. You know, it's just a Clouser, Clouser Mineral kind of look. So, like, subscribe, deuces.